very good morning to one and all as a part of our forestry day celebration we have two invited talks today uh, on behalf of kfra seminar committee i i would like to welcome you all for this program and i request our respected director for an introductory, introductory note and for the introduction of speakers over to you sir uh, thank you uh, srijit so uh, in connection with the international day of forests actually the united nations general assembly had proclaimed this march 21st as the international day of forests in uh, 2012 basically this uh, uh, this day we are celebrating to raise awareness about the importance of all types of forests and on this day countries are actually encouraged to take local national and international efforts to organize activities which promote conservation and sustainable management of forests uh in this context uh, before i introduce the speakers uh, as you all know our forests provide a host of ecosystem services like maintaining the air water and carbon cycles that are critical to life on earth and uh, among this uh, in forests uh, of course all uh, living organisms are important but trees uh, play a very pivotal role in providing habitat to flora and fauna sustaining lives and livelihood through fuel fodder timber ntfp and the like uh, now what is concerning is a recent report by the uh, botanical uh, conservation uh, uh, bcgi uh, 2021 report that is actually a consortium of botanical gardens across the world and that is based in uk their report which came in the uh, state of the environment report of uh, csc Uh, highlighted a very important fact which i thought that would be appropriate for this occasion that out of the 58497 tree species worldwide about 30% that is around 17510 species are threatened with extinction and uh, out of this uh, 58497 species india has around 2608 tree species of which 6, 615 are endemic and uh, 18% are threatened with extinction in india that is a case and uh, two endemic species hopia shinkeng and sterculia cassiana from northeast uh, they have already gone extinct uh, and also corypha telleria in the wild that is also gone and uh, in peninsular india four species uh, have been reported to have gone extinct we also know that in sandalwood uh, santalum fernandiana uh, went extinct Uh, one uh, century back so uh, these are very critical things uh, that we need to be aware and uh, unless there is proper awareness uh, regarding the conservation uh, and uh, we are going to face uh, real problems in the future and for the future generations so with this uh, introductory remarks uh, let me come to my task at hand that is introducing uh, the two speakers that are lined up on this occasion uh one is uh, dr n krishnamar who probably needs no introduction many of you know he is the chair our rc chairman also uh he will be talking about forestry and sustainable development dr krishnamar has a uh, post graduate in zoology and a phd uh, in uh, on the ecology of papilionates that's what the uh, phd topic and his career actually started in the indian forest service as a dfo in kanyakumari later on uh, he was the wildlife warden of animalies nilgiris conservator and also director of the arinigar anna zoological park for 6 years that is where his uh, he came to be known uh, uh, worldwide for his works on conservation and innovative approaches in zoo management and he has also been the ccf research for around 6 years in uh, planning and development dr krishnamar is also has also been the director of the uh, ifgtv that is uh, the research institute of icfre for 6 years institute of forest genetics and rebreeding which is based in coimbatore after his uh, stint in ifgtv 
uh, he went on to become the APCCF administration and uh, PCCF and half of Tamil Nadu. Currently, he is the member uh, State Biodiversity Board Tamil Nadu and he is also an expert member on the river uh, rejuvenation water conservation in Tamil Nadu and uh, also member of the Policy Research uh, Council of ICFRE. He has special interest in forest genetic research, conservation, biology, zoo management and forestry research. Uh, he is also the current chairman of State Environmental Impact Assessment Authority, Tamil Nadu. Uh, so that is his latest assignment. Of course, we are all familiar with him in KFRA as the RC chairman for the past uh, couple of years. Now, uh, I would also like to introduce uh, our other uh, speaker, who is also his namesake, I should say. Another Dr. Yes. Krishnamar Navaladi. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, sir. Good morning. He will be talking about participatory forest management and community development, sharing the experience from Orisha, uh, Odisha. He is basically a qualified academician and extension educator with more than three decades of professional experience that includes teaching, research, project guidance, training, extension service, and academic administration in agriculture and forestry sectors. Dr. Krishnomar has a post-graduation in agriculture extension, was employed in agriculture university where he completed his uh, PhD in agriculture extension. Uh, besides, he has undergone specialized training in extension methods, program instructions uh, at reputed national and international institutions uh, like the National Extension Education Institute, National Academy of Agriculture Research Management, NAM, Hyderabad, uh, RECO, uh, FTC, Bangkok. His specialization includes extension education, uh, development and media communication as applied to agriculture, community forestry, and participatory forest management. Uh, besides uh, agroforestry, he has been involved in more than 25 research projects as team leader and uh, uh, or co uh, as also as co-team co leader with many national and international collaborations has uh, actually offered more than 70 training programs and conducted 36 seminars and field level workshops. Uh, he has published more than 90 research papers, co-authored five books, and currently his, uh, his current assignment is as a team leader for the participatory management com community development and gender expert of uh, Orissa Forest Department uh, phase two project in Bhuvaneswar. He has also been the past director of the Biju Patnaik Tribal Agrobiodiversity Center, MSSR of Jaipur uh, in Odisha, besides the professor uh, and uh, in communication and extension management in the prestigious Indian Institute of Forest Management, IFO, Bhopal. So with this brief introduction, let me first invite Thank our you. first speaker, uh, Dr. Krishnamar Narayanan, <laughs> Both of them have the same initial. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Uh, okay. uh, Director Dr. Sham, uh, let me at the outset uh, thank the KFRA Seminar Committee for having welcomed me this morning. Uh, Dr. Krishna Kumar Navladi, I think after a long time we are meeting. Yeah, yeah. Nice, <laughs> nice, nice meeting you here. Yes. And um, Dr. Srijet, uh, all uh, senior scientists of KFRA. Um, the GRFs, SRFs, and all those who are present today. Uh, the two Krishna Kumars addressing you is, uh, on a such an important day. Uh, assumes important because, as uh, rightly, uh, you know, as, uh, the, Dr. Sham has set the tone for today's discussion. We all know that uh, the World Forestry Day or the International Day of Forests is celebrated by UN world over. And um, every year, uh, the World Forestry Day is celebrated with certain theme. Last year, I remember the theme was Forest Restoration, a Path to Recovery and Well-Being. And this year, 2022 being Forest Sustainable Production, production and Consumption. As uh, rightly said, we are supposed to create awareness about forests, the types of forests that we have, the problems of the forest, the prospects it holds, to the people and see that more number of people join the efforts to conserve the forest and expand the forest cover in the country and world over. Uh, we know that forests definitely, particularly in India, 
are sacred, are natural assets, and they play a very important role in sustainable development. Forests are rightly called the superheroes, the superman, because they hold the potential for prosperity, the livelihood security, carbon sequestration, they are stress managers. These are things that we've read even in the schools today, that forests have its own role in uh, a lot of good things. They provide water, they provide food, they provide uh, the NGFP, the medicine plants. So from pencils to paper, everything, forests are important. And more than 80% of the tribals, the traditional medicines are dependent on the forest plants that we have. So therefore, um, conserving forests becomes very important, particularly today, the uh, greenhouse emissions. And when we talk of climate change, forests are the best bet. We also know that Indian forests hold a lot of forest genetic resource, which are also dwindling rapidly. So there is concern. And uh, I still remember when 1987, uh, we had the Brundtland Commission um, the defining sustainable development when they said that the needs of the present should be met without compromising the future needs. That precisely is the approach to sustainable development. And now it has been well emphasized that sustainable development holds the key to future because the three pillars of sustainable development being environmental protection, economic prosperity and socio-cultural advancement. All this can happen only through sustainable development. Indian forests, we all know, I don't need to talk to um, the KFRA scientists on the importance of uh, sustainable development. Sustainable de development definitely is uh, important for economic sustainability, for environmental sustainability, for social sustainability, and as it provides a life support system. It is also very important for economic prosperity, environmental protection, and well-being. But are the forests that we are talking of, which is so important, being sustainably managed, are they providing the needed goods and services is becoming very important. I still remember when I joined the Forest Service in 1980, when we were there, things were not so difficult as it is today. Uh, you know, every year, as a divisional forest officer or district forest officer, we had certain responsibilities, which were very important those days. Probably one is the protection of the forest. So going most of the time around the forest to see if there is some felling within the forest, sand load, rose and teak, and then see where uh, the crime has happened and how do we really control. The other thing was there were certain targets set for us to plant up a few hectares as uh, under teak or sandal or some of the tree species that were found important for uh, you know export. And as uh, these trees were looked up as commodities for revenue, revenue became very important. So protection, revenue earning through forest was something very important. Today, we know that forest has got a very totally different change dynamics and um, forests uh, requires multidisciplinary approach and uh, it needs attention of all. That's the way it is because it is so important for the for food, fruit, fuel, all that we get from the forest, including shelter, the health of people are dependent on forests and uh, nothing less than 25% of the poorest of the poor in the world are dependent on forests. The recent Forest Survey report uh, 2021 is on a happy note, which says that definitely the forest cover of um, India is increasing. Um, the mangrove forests are increasing. The carbon stock in the forests have increased. And um, everything looks good for forests. And the government of India and all the state governments, they want not only really conservation, merely in terms of quantity, increasing the forest, but they're also more worried about the quality. So the quality and the quantity of forests, if they have to be improved, they need to be sustainably managed. Yet the question that lingers large today is, are the forests managed sustainably? We all know that in 1992, when the Rio conference came into being, people talked about sustainable development then and sustainable forest management, and where they said that forests are areas from where timber can be harvested judiciously to see that the, uh, there is also growth in the forest, uh, concomitant with the removals that are happening. Uh, sustainable forest management 
um, was um, you know advocated in a very big way. I remember the Bhopal India process, the Institute of Forest Management, from where my friend Mr. Krishna Kumar is. They took a very important role in ensuring that forests were sustainably managed. They brought out a lot of ideas, but somehow that fizzled out. And then we all moved on into a new discussion called the ecosystem approach. But today, uh, with the Sustainable Development Goals Agenda 2030 uh, becoming a very important thing, um, we have to see how best forests can be sustainably managed, and also see that forests are just only not part of uh, the life of on land. That is uh, Goal 15, but it is much beyond that. it is very clearly known that um, forests particularly are very important for all the 17 goals when we say that um, our forests are all um, very good as per the fsi report the fsr but uh, there is also alarm that um, the open forests are increasing in area and the moderate forests are also losing in area while the dense forest is increasing when the open forest and the scrub forest are going to increase that shows that there is somewhere degradation is happening so probably sustainable management has to come into force in a bigger way the challenges as i see today before forestry is too many in the era when people are talking about blue economy the green economy the bio economy and green companies and green plants and green funds when everything is being talked on one side there is also a lot of threats and changes that are happening to forests it's not those small threats that we talk of like um, uh, people going in and grazing or fuel wood being removed from the forest it is much beyond we are also worried as scientists as managers that the productivity of the indian forest system is uh, reducing and this needs concern there is also need for better data management in from forests because there is no consistency in the data that is uh, coming out from the forest for example if we do not know what is the value of each of the forest types that we have there are more than 10 types of forest types it is also known that more than 41% of the forests in the country are degraded and uh, still we have committed that by 2030 we will be planting up 26 million hectares of our forests so as to support climate action so why uh, the problems today with forest management are that we really do not know or we do not have a mechanism to assess the goods and services that come out of the forest though we say that forests are important so there are no foolproof method for the valuation of forests that can easily be um, supported by other facts the post covid and the post covid has also brought in a lot of changes during the covid i remember people said that since no one is going to the forest everything is fine out there but things are not as it looks good because we know that a lot of changes are taking place in the forest because of the unsustainable consumption today employment being a very serious problem the rural mass is dependent on forests for everything it has become a source for their livelihood we know that forest today caters to almost 30% of the needs of the poor people particularly the very poor people and sometimes it is told that forests get better revenue than agriculture sector the forest the agriculture and the fishery sector put together contributes something like 17% of the gdp we we'll have to see that forests uh, becomes an important sector uh, in the minds of the people and it do does provide all the requirement that people wants while at the same time forests are not disturbed in any way they maintain enhanced and the productivity of the forest increase so how do we do that today the challenges are too many as i rightly said uh, we do not the urbanization is a very serious problem i am able to see the type of threats that are happening uh, it is just not on the recorded forests or the notified forests but we also find urban forests are really decreasing because with every day more uh, um, uh, you know develop in the in the garb of development lot of buildings coming up infrastructure bridges of course they are all required but how do we really balance and see that the biodiversity outside in the agriculture land in the other lands are not really lost agriculture expansion itself is a very big threat to forestry because uh, people feel that uh, the area which is lying fallow needs to be converted quickly for some productive uh, crops and the <coughs> out there the agrobiodiversity is lost fragmentation of forests is a very big thing 
water rejuvenation is another serious issue. We do not know what is the services in terms of water that the forests provide. Though we have, we know that all the rivers and streams that the country has all originates from the forests. So therefore, the timber, India still is a very big timber uh, importer and a lot of uh, money is spent on this. While forestry has become a transdisciplinary and multidisciplinary subject, it is necessary just not the forest scientists alone, but the social scientists, everybody, the women and the youth, all have to be involved in the conservation of forests. Forest has its own problem of uh, pest and diseases, which really sometimes go unnoticed unless it becomes a havoc. Then forest fires, the droughts, the pandemics, which I was listing. Ecotourism, which looks a very big potential, can sometimes also be harmful if not managed sustainably. Pollution, poaching, resorts that are coming up, the construction activities, the colonization and encroachment, all these are uh, detrimental to forests. They may look, they may give you immediate economic benefits, but it is definitely going to be an economic crash for the country if, the, if there is an ecological collapse that is happening. The plastics, the animal shifts, the river degradation are all threats that are looming large in the country. Anthropogenic pressures are definitely increasing, particularly along the fringes of the forest. That is why it becomes very important that sustainable forest management so that the present needs are met and the future um, capital resources are not uh, hampered in any way becomes very important. While we have huge carbon reserves because we have not really worked on the forest, it is true that the uh, tree cover, the trees in the forest are increasing and the carbon sinks are definitely there. But as I told you, there are a lot of uh, concerns about forests in the country with uh, the changes that are happening to the forest types. The original vegetation is not there. This is the decade of eco restoration. When we say 2030, we should try to bring back to near nature the forests that are degraded. How do we really do that? It is not a conventional afforestation program. The restoration program definitely requires the support of the people. And how do we really harness the support of the people it becomes very important. Earlier, when sustainable development management uh, programs were started, there were a lot of criteria and indicators. We had to set criteria and indicators to see how our forests are recuperating and how forests are improving. But today, all that we need to do is align ourselves with the ambitions of the government of India and the state governments, which are doing a lot of things for the sake of uh, uh, forest conservation, river rejuvenation. All that we need to do, do is, as people, see that the youth also and the women, everybody gets involved. It's just not the uh, research institutions or the forest department, and it is just not their mandate alone to conserve forests. It has been told time and enough that everybody should handhold to see that this green goal that we're sitting upon is protect, protected for posterity. There is ample evidence that the sustainable development goals 2030 can only be bro uh, successful if forests are well protected. It is not that um, uh, sustainable development goal, as I said earlier, life on land alone is considered because um, we know that we have a lot of uh, national parks, sanctuaries, forests are well protected. We have something like 24% of the area in the country under uh, tree cover and forest cover, but that is just not enough. How do we really see that forests are integrated into every component of sustainable development goal? I think that this is happening and this has to happen in a much bigger way. When you talk of sustainable development goal number one, no poverty or poverty alleviation, uh, we definitely know that forests are safety nets and um, forests play a very important role because more than a lakh and 70,000 fringe villages all need um, to be taken along. And if no poverty has to come in, then we'll have to see that uh, forests stay productive, for which there are a lot of programs. It is very important that agroforestry and uh, the other programs are understood by uh, people, the homestead forestry, to see that uh, this uh, uh, item of sustainable development, one, no poverty is achieved. And I'm very sure that sustainable management of forests can enable us to see that poverty is removed in the country by 2030 to a large extent by taking everyone along. When you talk of sustainable development goal, no hunger. Today, forests play a very important role as the baskets, food baskets, 
that for the tribals, for instance, all most of the food that they get is all from the forest. The wood, or the honey, or the bamboo that they talk of, everything is within the forest. The NTFP, the non-timber forest products that we have in the forest, which were earlier called the MFP, they hold a lot. The leaves and the seeds they hold a significant role in making it zero hunger. And so, particularly people along the forest fringes, and by value addition. Uh, these products can also go out to the forest. So, how do we really uh, how forest support? There are enough evidence to say that forest does support zero hunger, but more research in this area is required. When you talk of sustainable development goal uh, three, good health and well-being. There again, sustainable management of forest becomes important because today we know that good health. We talk of good health, the recreation or the walking that you talk of, the mental health that you talk of, the peace. And more than nine thousand plants, more than fifty percent of the uh, traditional medicines all come from the forest. The sustainable development goal two can also be achieved if managed forests are managed sustainable, sustainably. Sustainable development goal quality education. We know that today education, forestry education itself is a, a very big uh, thing that is coming up in colleges and schools. We know tribal schools within the forest also play a very important role, and we have excellent institutes like the FSI. The IFM, KFRA, TBGRI, they all contribute to forestry education, supporting quality education. When you talk of sustainable development goal five, gender equality, uh, Madam Dr. Parvati Varir is here. We know that people like her have played very important role in ensuring that women play a very important role in decision making. JFM success would not have been so, but. For the role played by them, but today JFM itself has become dominant. It is it is in the significance of our country that we try to rejuvenate the JFM committees and see that women play a greater role in forest conservation. When you talk of clean uh, sustainable development goal six, clean water and sanitation, I think there again the importance of small rivulet streams that are within the forest, the river rejuvenation, all the rivers that uh, flow within the country that go to the Bay of Bengal. All the Indian Ocean, all of them are important as uh, they are the potential um, holders of life for people, the fishermen that we talk of, the coastlines, etc. Sustainable Goal Seven: Affordable Green Energy. I think wood becomes very important, and today when we talk of uh, tree-borne oil seeds, holds a very big potential. Various leaves and twigs are being used as um, briquettes. And there's so many other ways in which um, biogasifiers again play a very important role. Energy to us looks important, and there again, conservation of forests and sustainable management of the forest resources becomes important. When you talk of decent work and economic growth, I don't think without forests there can be decent growth and economic um, because the employment potential in the rural sides, particularly the rural economy. That it occupies, say, for example, through ecotourism as guides, etc. So, how do we really bring in? The next goal, SDG nine, nine, industry innovation infrastructure. As I told you, India is a, a timber deficient country. We are importing. We need to, in the next ten years, become exporters because we are today exporters of very many agriculture products. Timber also, there is tremendous potential. So, how do we really see that through sustainable management, our uh, toy industry, the plywood industry, the, the the pencil industry, the book industry, all of them are able to produce more and able to really export and make revenue out of it. Because revenue from forests also becomes very important to see uh, not only uh, from uh, through from forests but also through plantations. All the plantation and forest put together becomes our biggest resource. Sustainable development goal, reducing inequalities also. There are a lot of organizations like the NGT and other organizations, the SIA, the State Environmental Impact Authority, the rules and the acts are available. When you talk of sustainable cities and communities, sustainable goal 11, there again forestry becomes important. Forests need to go out to urban areas, rooftop gardens or um, green lungs. And um, today we are talking about National Smart City Mission and uh, all this can happen only through uh, sustainable Protection of forests, creating forest lands in the city, and uh, 13 consumption and production. We need to have uh, responsible consumption and production, and through agroforestry and other things. Definitely, I don't need to tell you that sustainable goal 13, climate action, can happen mainly through forests because India is committed to reduce uh, the carbon emission by 30 to 35 percent by 2030. For which forests are excellent carbon sinks. They are. Uh, sequester, they can, the trees uh, uh, definitely can car sequester a lot of carbon. We need to plant more trees to ensure that the, uh, that the nation um, gains 33% very quickly through such action. And, sustain, and uh, SDG 14, which is life below water, the oceans, the marine resources, the mangroves, 
all can be protected through terrestrial conservation and um, besides conservation of the marine and the coastal resources. Sustainable development goal 15, life on land, I have talked enough, forests and water resources become important and there are n number of programs in which there is need for all of us to be part of it. Sustainable development goal 16 and 17, which talks of peace, justice and strong institutions and partnerships. All this also requires the support of forests. So I think forests needs a deep rethinking, just not in me and the few people who are present here, but overall in the country as a whole. And how do we bring about this rethinking is only through creating awareness. That is why today we are celebrating such days. It is not important, it is not enough that we only think about forests on a day like the National for International Forest Day or the Wildlife Week celebration, think about wildlife on that day. As we often say, uh, the government, the NGOs, the citizens group, all of us need to work together. What is really required today for sustainable development of forests in the country and to see that we achieve 33% of our land area and the forest is through a cooperation. A cooperation of public, coordination, collective responsibility. I, when I'm uh, telling this, there is also need for forestry institutions to change our behavior. There is need for forestry institutions to bring in better governance in their own systems, to see that they innovate con continuously. There has to be inclu inclusiveness in their program. And it definitely a landscape approach in conservation is required because targets have been, been set world over. 350 million hectares are to be planted under the bond agreement, bond challenge, we all know. And um, therefore, what is really required today is better budget, better investment in forests, not only I say financial investment, there has to be mental invention, there has to be intentional invention of doing good for the forest. So all these gaps can be filled up. I'm very happy. I have to have, you know, happened to sit through the research programs of forestry for the last uh, one month with the director uh, of KFRA. We were going through some of the national programs uh, on forestry uh, at the Government of India level, ICFRA. We also looked at the institutes uh, like uh, the KFRA. We had a look at the forest department's uh, research that is going on at the state level. We find that all the research today, fortunately, are poised towards the sustainable development goals. Uh, it can happen inadvertently or advertently, but we see good things are happening. It was not like those days, 30, 35 years before, when we could think of tree improvement program on a particular tree species like eucalyptus, cashewina, or teak where the research focus was just on a few trees or a few small issues. But today I'm happy to see that in India, forestry research is almost touching all gamuts of life, all gamuts of uh, sustainability. Uh, it is so varied that uh, people talk about uh, uh, Kannadi Paya, which is bamboo based uh, uh, conservation, trying to see that how tribals and their livelihoods are uh, brought back through the bamboo weaving network, restoration of forests, nanocomposites, people talk about uh, nanotechnology, the forest genetic resource, microplastics, xylarium. Uh, I was really happy that the good tools of GIS, RS, the drone technology and other technologies are coming to support um, uh, conservation, and sustainable development. It is just not that, uh, you know, we, we were talking conventional forestry, while people have not forgotten conventional forestry, a lot of new tools and techniques have come in to see that um, there is, the forest cover improves scientifically. I'm also happy to see that forestry today has a lot of economic programs, a lot of programs to see that uh, we understand all the soil dynamics at its full length. We understand the seed science better. There is research going on in agroforestry, in ecophysiology. People's citizen science in forestry itself is a very good thing. And uh, forest fires, socioeconomic research, soil microbes, and uh, stress tolerance. There are a whole array of research that is going on, in spite of the fact that we only have few numbers of scientists, uh, forestry scientists particularly. So therefore, in this country, we need to have more forestry scientists, more foresters, more people becoming foresters. And that's really happening because we find everywhere the bird group, the butterfly group, the people's group for conservation. So we find an alert that has come in into the youth. And this alert and new mindset alone can ensure that the forests are sustainably managed. It is not the domain of a few, it is the domain of everyone. And on a day like this, let us spread this message that um, forests definitely is not, an, is not just the art and science of practicing, creating, managing forests, but it is also 
very important that forests are managed sustainably so that the human benefits are continuously reaped from the forest goods and services continue to flow from the forest for the country's overall development prosperity peace harmony and the well-being of the nation and if our forests are good and i think everything is good all the 190 countries plus in the world if their forests are good and then i think the whole country whole world is prosperous look at the wars that are happening look at the chain debacles that are happening the socio economic upheavals all around us so on one side by something could be happening there are also debacles and destabilize the forest ecosystem what is really warranted is a universal understanding of the importance of forest every man every child every woman needs to understand forest as their foster mother and see that this rich resource that the country fully has is protected enhanced improved in quality and quantity for the future generation thank you very much thank you dr sham and shrijit for this wonderful opportunity thank you sir uh, for your wonderful uh, address uh, there's a lot of things that uh, we could ponder and think over i'm sure uh, many of us has been enlightened quite a bit on this